Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Today I will be speaking with Mr. Michael Siri. Uh, Michael Siri is, among other things, a commodities expert. Uh, he frequently appears on so many places, Bloomberg News, Fox Business, CNBC Worldwide, CNN Business, Bloomberg TV, The Wall Street Journal, too many to mention. Uh, he's also a guest on First Business, a national and internationally syndicated business show. Uh, Michael has started his career in 1990 as, at the Chicago Board of Trade as a runner, uh, but he worked his way up to becoming a Series 3 broker. He's been trading commodities since way back in 1994. Currently, Mike is the principal of Track Trading LLC, and he believes very strongly in risk management. We're talking about capital preservation here. He's not taking any unnecessary chances with his clients. Um, currently, uh, he is in charge of Siri futures.com s-e-e-r-y futures.com and that link is in the description of this video and we're going to be talking about uh, trading commodities mostly but uh, you know Mr. Siri uh, can help you both with the consulting end of things as well as the trading thank you Mr. Michael Siri for joining me on looking at the markets today well thank you David I uh, I look forward to dealing with you I'm yeah, excited yeah. About, uh, about talking the commodity markets with you awesome you know, so many people have traded stocks. Maybe they got an E-Trade account and they started trading stocks. Maybe they even took it a step further into options. But commodities uh, and the commodities commodities futures markets, that's a little scary for some people. Um, do you believe that trading commodities is something that a retail trader can get into? Uh, absolutely. Um, no question about it. And you have to remember, a lot of stocks are commodity price driven. A lot of oil companies a lot of livestock companies. So some of the fundamentals why a stock is going up or down is because the commodity is going up or down. Um, what you have to do in commodities, and just like you have to do in stocks, is you have to get out of the losers because you will have losers. Mm. It's just a, it's a mathematical certainty. Yeah. So you have to manage the risk. And my rule of risk is on any given trade, you risk 2% of your account balance, and that's it. So if you have a hundred thousand dollar account, you risk two thousand dollars on that trade. That's it. So you're not losing twenty grand, fifty grand. The worst case scenario is two thousand dollars. We're talking about small position sizing here, which for me is a cornerstone uh, of trading, especially if you want to be in this for the long run. If you don't want to blow yes. up your account, <laughs> correct. We're we're basically dealing with one contract, maybe two. Um, it's not like in stocks where you buy 100 shares or 500 shares. In, in futures, you might only have one or two contracts because of the leverage. For example, if you buy one contract of soybeans, you are controlling 5,000 bushels. Yeah. So you, know, so you think only one, you can't make any money. Yes, you can. And you also have to remember, you might have three or four different trades on at once, all risking $2,000. You might have a corn, a coffee, a sugar. <clears throat> risking two thousand dollars on each one <clears throat> interesting so let, let me ask you this if somebody wants to get into uh, the commodities markets um, I'm gonna guess that it's you know just because you like Starbucks coffee that's probably not, not enough to start uh, trading coffee uh, beans immediately okay or just because you like candy that's not enough to start trading trading sugar futures so uh, what is yeah, between grains, metals, oil, uh, or the S and P's, the Dow, that kind of thing. What is a good place to start with as far as trading commodities goes? Well, generally, what you want to start looking commodities is really based on technical trends. You must be a trend follower. The trend, like the old saying, David, is the trend is your friend. You yep. don't want to go counter trend trading. Just like in the stock market, the trend clearly is to the upside, so you should be playing it to the upside. But to get involved. Really what you want to start looking at is charting and, and look at charts. That's the key, just like in stocks. Get some familiarity, get some education on how to chart. And once you can do that, then you start getting involved. Fundamentals and commodities can change very quickly. You could read an article today about how much sugar there is in the world 
and then in a week from now, sugar just keeps exploding to the upside, and you say, well, why? There's all the sugar. Because things can change. A weather event can change in a matter of days, okay? So that's where the risk comes in if you're wrong. 2% doesn't matter what the fundamentals say, you're out. Um, but basically what you want to do is start looking at charts. Identify number one, what is the trend? Is it higher or lower, okay? Uh, where do you put the stop loss? Meaning where is my exit strategy? That's Those are the first two things you need to do. Interesting. So we're talking about Fundamentals are important, but you got to look at the charts. You got yes, to because, yeah. yes, the and fundamentals can change very quickly. A lot of commodities are weather-based. Like right now, here in the Midwest, we are going into we are in planting season. But if we start, and we have a lot of corn and soybeans right now, and the prices of soybeans hit new lows this week. But we get 95 degrees for two weeks, this price will explode to the upside because now we're going to have less because it's going to hurt the crop. So that's where technical analysis, and that's what they call it, technical analysis is very, very important. Makes sense. Wanted to, we'll get back to that, but I wanted to talk about what's going on here on SiriFutures.com, which I recommend everybody should visit. Um, you've got so much here. You've got uh, some free content. You've got a blog, as well as Mike's Coffee Shop. What the heck is Mike's Coffee Shop? Can right. I get coffee there? <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing you can't get, but maybe I'll, I'll fly a drone over to your house yeah. and send you a cup from <laughs> Amazon. Um, <clears throat> basically, what it is is I write on a daily basis, and it also includes talking to me on the phone. You can't talk to me. In this business, no one will talk to you. I will sit down with you and talk with you, and that's why people like me. But I write a lot of comments. I give trade recommendations, and if I'm not involved in the commodity, I'll still give an opinion on what to look for, where the key areas. But if I am involved in it, I'll tell you where to put the stop, what the risk is, what my thinking is. And then, like I said, talking to me is important. I like talking to people, especially beginners. You need to... So sit down and actually get a game plan together. Especially if you're just starting out. But even if you're not oh, starting out, you definitely want to be able to get that one-on-one -on -one personalized attention, which you exactly. do. Yeah, which you are providing. Um, I'm looking at the uh, at the um, products that you have here, and uh, you have. It looks like you have several levels here going on. Uh, Correct. At, dif at different mm -hmm. price points, which makes sense. Correct. The um, two most the two most yep. popular ones, David, are the one-on-one, -on -one, which I charge $5,000 for the whole year, um, and, and that's unlimited, and that also includes the newsletter. If you just want the newsletter, um, then it's just $1,250 for the year, and you can still talk to me. Uh, generally, the people with the 5000 it's going to be more time-consuming, sure. uh, more, com more complicated, generally larger accounts. Obviously, if you're trading a $10,000 account, you're not going to pay $5,000, right. but you're trading a hundred thousand or more uh, five thousand seems like a lot but that's for a whole year it's not a lot and I also see some events here uh, for example webinars trading workshops you offer those as well correct absolutely and you know what I'm here for I you know I pride myself on good service uh, or terrific service and you know I will sit with you for an hour if you want I mean whatever you need need to do I will help you do to try to become successful I, and I, the one yeah. thing the one thing I'm very good at is I don't yeah. make mistakes. And people are like, how don't you make mistakes? I don't. That right. doesn't mean I don't have losing trades because I do. I have many losing trades, That's, but you have to manage them. But I don't make mistakes. I don't buy the wrong contract month. In commodities, you have months. You have old crop, new crop. Uh, it's more into it. So I don't make mistakes. I don't have too much, too many contracts on. I don't risk too much money. I don't make mistakes. And that's where I, I don't overtrade. I don't add to losers. I, I stay right. with the basic formula of success. And that's why people fail in this business. They overtrade. They add to losers. They turn a $5,000 loss into a $30,000 loss. They don't know how to accept a loss and move on. And that's where I help them. You're sticking to your principles, and you're not doing anything reckless. And uh, no, yeah, capital I'm like a preservation. Robot. Yeah, I'm a robot. I do the same thing all the time. There are times when I get stopped out of a trade and I lose a thousand dollars or something. I'm upset about it, but I take the loss and I accept it and I move on. And then you'd be surprised uh, a week later if you were still in that thing. You could have been down eight grand. And you go, that's why, you know, you get out. And then there are times you get out, and then it does go your way. But you have to you have to trade a formula. You can't just second guess. Second guessing is the kiss of death, David, because in the long run, uh, you're going to be wrong by second guessing. Once in a while, you'll be right. But you have to think of this in the long run, not, not what my account balance is today or tomorrow, 
what what's it going to be in five years? Yeah, you got to look at the big picture as well yeah. as what's going on right now. You can't micromanage every single dollar. Uh, that's just not the way to do it. Yeah, there are months in the stock market where you lose constantly, you know, but then there are months where you win constantly. You have to look at it in the long run. Look at the people in 2008 and 2009 who took huge losses. But now look at where those people are if they stuck with it. They've had tremendous wins. Yeah. Tremendous. But you have to think down the road, not, oh, my God, the market's down again tomorrow. Get me out. No. you got to think further and just keep playing the rules. Want to talk about crude oil? Uh, you recently wrote an article. Here it is, right there on your website. Uh, crude oil hits a four-week high. Um, okay, so you know, crude oil went down for a while. Now it's coming back up around Correct. what uh, forty-eight dollars a barrel or so. Uh, I, th well. I think it hit fifty recently. Um, yeah. Okay. Now what? It, it, you know, where do we go from here? Now I and, and if you read the article, like I just was telling you, I'm not involved in crude, but I still wrote about it, telling you, you know, what's basically going on. Now my trading system, David, is I buy on four week highs and I sell on four week lows. I want to see a trend starting to develop before I get in. However, the my exit strategy, if I'm long a contract, is I put my stop at the 10 day low. That's my exit strategy. But the risk on this one is too high. It does not meet my 2% criteria, so I am not involved, okay? Sometimes you will miss a market because the risk is too high. I like to take risks of $1,500 or less. That's just generally my trading thesis, okay? Yeah. But the 10-day low, that's where I get out. So if you are long this market, sometimes I'll say if you are long, this is where I would place my stop, okay? Because it's all about maintaining yeah. risk. Oh, of course. That's that's huge and crucial. And you want to admit sometimes that you're wrong in a trade. Okay, yeah. my assumption David, is wrong. I'm probably wrong. Uh, on average, I'm probably wrong 70% of the time. Interesting. So that if, if I write 10 articles, and they're all 10 recommendations, seven of them will be wrong. Hmm. Okay? But you say, well, how, how can you make money? How can you be successful? Because those seven... Uh, we, we take the losses. It's not necessarily always 2%. Some of them just fizzle out. You might lose you know, $300 or something. It's nothing. Um, but the key is the three winners, you let them run, and you don't get out until you're finally stopped out. But that's how you have to do it. And you add to winners, and you never, ever add to a loser. You accept the loss, and that's it. But you don't do more contracts. Don't dollar cost average in this business. That is the kiss of death. It's been said, let your winners run and cut your losers short. I've spoken to so many people, and that has been told to me over and over and over, that's and it. there's a lot of truth to it, absolutely. And that's how I trade. That's yeah. how I trade. Yeah, and and this is kind of uncharitable, but some people say only losers, uh, average losers. <laughs> no, yeah, <clears throat> never add to a loser. Like I said, I don't make mistakes. I don't add to a loser. Makes sense to me. Um, wanted to talk about some other commodities. For example, if somebody wants to get into uh, coffee futures, okay, you Correct. wrote that volatility in coffee is be beginning to increase. Uh, do, you, do you look forward to volatility? Is is yes. that something? Is that when you trade when it's getting volatile? Well, you can trade whenever, but you want volatility because that means the prices can really move. Now, in coffee, as I write, I'm not involved in this, but I'm looking at buying it if prices break one thirty seven seventy five in the July contract. That's a four week high. And if you do take that trade and that happens, we're putting the stop at the 10 day low, which is 130. Now that 10 day low will be raised if the price goes up um, to the next 10 day high. But, so I'm looking at buying this commodity. We could be involved tomorrow if it's up there. We're only about 400 points away, <clears throat> which is a daily, it, that's just coffee does that in a day. <clears throat> Interesting. Um, do you also trade uh, the Indices, uh, for example, yes. uh, in, in the fu in the futures, uh, for example, the S and P's, the Dow, that kind of thing. Yes, uh, we will be involved with the Nasdaq 100, the Dow, and the S and P 500. Um, they ha also have mini contracts there, which yep. are smaller contracts for smaller accounts. But yes, that is part of the group. As far as fundamentals go, 
is it necessary, for example, if you're trading coffee futures, is it necessary to study the politics of a place like Brazil or something like that, which is very, I, I really, which is very I interesting really lately, by the way. I'm sure, as we all know, uh, Brazil, has had, Brazil has some interesting things going on right now. Do you need to be yeah. studying that every day? Should you be watching the news, or is that uh, you know, maybe somebody who doesn't have time for that? Is that not something you need to be doing? Uh, I, I think you got to stay away from the fundamentals. You want to just be a chartist. The fundamentals can change. The Brazilian real dropped seven percent Thursday, and it sent coffee prices down five hundred. But then Friday, coffee is up three hundred, and, and this Brazilian real will be forgotten about come Monday's trade. So don't get wrapped up in fundamentals. They change very quickly. We could have a frost down in Brazil, and then coffees explode into the upside. And you say, well, what about the real? It doesn't matter anymore. It's old news. Um, be a chartist. That's where. You need to sit down with me and go over charts, and that's the key to successful commodity trading. Focusing on technicals, always Correct. a good idea, absolutely. Um, real quickly, wanted to talk about a very popular topic among my listeners and viewers, uh, silver and gold. Uh, you wrote about how silver went up 40 cents this week. This is a, a blog posting from May 19th. Um, I'm I'm looking at silver right now. Uh, just you know, maybe not the futures or commodities. Uh, you know, futures. I, I would probably just buy the ETF uh, with the ticker SLV, something like that. Um, I don't know. For people who are stackers, for people who want the physical stuff, is there any advantage to trading silver or gold futures? Yes, the the physical stuff. To be honest with you, I, I just you know people like to have this gold in their house and this silver in their house. I think it's foolish to have any large amounts of money in your house. Knowing knowing my luck, my house would burn down and then I have all this silver right. gone too. Right. Why why store and hoard all of this money? You could get robbed. It just doesn't make sense. When you can buy one futures contract, it's in a brokerage. Uh, you don't have to worry about theft or some crazy thing happening and you can control much more of it. And the problem with owning coins, and, and this is where people really uh, get hurt, when you buy a coin off of a dealer, he's putting a 20 or 30 percent increase on that price. That's how he's making a living, right? Mm. But then you go and sell that coin, guess what? You're getting 20 or 30 percent cut because he has to buy it low and sell it high. It's basically like a pawn shop. If you go and sell it to the pawn guy for 100 bucks, well, he's going to try to sell it for 150, right? Mm. But if you own the futures contract, you can liquidate it at a real price. You're not, you're not getting a retail... Uh, price on it. You're getting what it's actually worth. Interesting. So and instantly too. Yeah. If you want out your silver right now, you're out at that price. You don't have to go to a coin dealer and you know it's worth a hundred, but he's only offering you seventy five bucks for it. Well no. If on the future side, if it's worth a hundred, you're getting a hundred. Yeah. So you don't have to deal with the middleman taking their yes. cut as much. Gotcha. Right. That that's how they make a living. And there's nothing wrong with it. That's how they make a living. Sure. Uh, but uh, but you cannot make a, uh, you will not have a good deal owning all this silver and gold because when you have to sell it, you're going to get a haircut on it. They're not going to give you the actual price that it's worth. That's just yeah. the fact. I think a lot, you know, I, I've interviewed some of the greatest minds in, in silver and gold. Um, oftentimes the argument is that, well, if, if, you know, really bad things happen in the world, okay, <laughs> um, right. you know, if there, if there's a, you know, almost a, like a Mad Max kind of scenario. Right. Uh, having the physical stuff really is where it's at, and so maybe they have a different purpose in buying it. But I yeah, think, yeah. But if you're in, if you're just trading it, if you're just gonna right. get if, in and get out, perhaps yeah. futures are the way to go. Do you, would you agree? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. In this Mad Max theory, trust me, if that actually happened, I'd still be nervous having a bunch of gold and silver on me. I'd be robbed in about two seconds. Are you right. kidding me? It'd be total <laughs> chaos. It would be total pandemonium. So. No, th th come on. If you're actually thinking that's going to happen, then I, I, you know, I just think that's a fool's game. Right, right. Gotcha. Put it this way: we collapsed in 2008. There was no, uh, no, you know, no craziness. But no one was hoarding gold and silver, right? Right, right. True. <laughs> Interesting point. And then finally, and this is the big question, I think people would love to know: um, what are you bullish on as far as uh, which, which? Uh, you know, commodity products uh, for the rest of 2017, and are there any that you're bearish on? Well, the, the trends have been choppy. Uh, and the one thing about commodities, we will be sellers, we will be bearish on things. It's not always buying. If something is going down, we will be selling, okay? So it's not like the stocks, where generally you're always just the buyer. 
higher. In commodities, if things are going down, we will be a seller. Now, the U.S. dollar has hit a seven-month low uh, in Friday's action. That's good for commodity prices. And if you read my top article, I write, will weak dollar prop commodities higher? If that trend continues, and that's why silver was up, that's why gold was up, that's why oil has been rallying, that will continue. So I am bullish the commodities. You have to remember, if you look at a five-year chart on much of this, David, we're pretty low. Mm. Pretty low. Meaning the, the volatility is going to be to the upside, not to the downside. We're squeezing blood out of a turnip on some of this stuff. Interesting. Actionable advice right there that we all need to listen to. Uh, Mr. Michael Seary can be found at Siri, S-E-E-R-Y, futures.com. Uh, is there a, a social media, uh, are there any social media sites that, uh, you know, Twitter, that kind of I'm thing? On, yeah, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Skype, and I also have a live chat on my website. Okay. Uh, you can just hit the live chat. I always, that's how I talk to a lot of people. Sometimes they're at work, they don't want to be on the phone, but we'll talk that way. But yeah, Twitter and Skype and, and Facebook, I'm on all of those. But go to my website and, and uh, you know, we can always talk as well. And it's free. It's just part of the service. Very good, sir. I've been speaking with Mr. Mike Seary, who was generous enough to give me some of his time. And I've learned so much today about the commodities markets, what it's all about, what to look at, what not to look at, and how to get started. Uh, I hope to see you back here again sometime soon on Looking at the Markets. Thank you so much, Mr. Seary, for joining me today. I look forward to, uh, to working with you. Call me anytime. I'm here to help and help uh, any of your customers as well. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Thank you, David. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.